another warning sign that your marriage could be in trouble is you hardly have sex anymore. Sex is a barometer of the relationship. It, it tells you where the relationship is, and it tends to be the first thing to go and the last thing to come back. Yeah, there can be good reasons, and it's worth noting, there can be good reasons to not have sex. Uh, there can be physical issues, past traumas that you're working through, broken trust, infidelity, or just the crazy busy pace of life and little kids that are just sucking all of the energy out of you. What's important to distinguish is there's a difference between reasons and excuses, and you need to work through those things and either get the healing or the prioritization you need to really get some traction in this area. Another reason could be you don't feel connected, and that's very true for women. A lot of times women need to feel connected to their spouse before they want to have sex. I mean, we need to feel loved all throughout the day. The day. There's a book called Sex Begins in the Kitchen, and I don't think it's literally Sex Begins in the Kitchen. I mean, I guess it could be, but it's talking about how a woman needs to feel loved and cherished, and you need to be nice to us to for us to want to have sex with you at the end of the day. That is incredibly practical advice. <laughs> the you know that's. There's an old saying that for women that sex is kind of like the icing on the cake. For men, sex is the cake and the icing. And what I mean by that is that oftentimes for women, sex is the culmination of feeling connected. Oftentimes for men, sex is a means or a way to connect. And so it's really easy to see what can happen in this scenario if the woman is feeling like she's giving in it's very easy that she's going to feel like she's being used. And if the man is not getting what he needs in the relationship, very easy for him to feel rejected. And it's no wonder that sex becomes a, a frequent hot topic that couples can really have issues with. Yeah, the sixth warning sign is you just feel like roommates, like you're living parallel lives. I live my life. You live your life. We do opposite things. And there's no romance in the relationship. It really is like a roommate. Yeah, the opposite of love is not hate. The opposite of love is apathy. And I think that's what makes this so dangerous is that you really start to get apathetic uh, about the relationship in general. And what makes it so dangerous is a lot of times one spouse will be really unhappy about this and they'll feel like they've talked about wanting to be connected and they haven't been connected in a long time. And the other spouse feels like, yeah, things aren't great, but it's fine. I mean, we'll get back to that. You know, once the kids are grown, we'll get connected again. But the one spouse, it's usually the woman, gets um, just tired of it. They're tired of it and they end up filing for divorce and the other spouse is totally blindsided by that. So what do you do if you find yourself in that place where you're becoming roommates? Well, the first thing that you've got to do is make some noise. You've got to say something. You've got to make the implicit explicit. Go to your spouse and say, look, I am committed to us, but we are becoming roommates. We're losing our spark. I need us together to make us a priority and take the steps that you need to be able to do that. That's so, so important. Yeah, another is make sure you are connecting every day. We'll tell couples every year, do something for your marriage, go to a conference, read a book, but also every day connect. Uh, Derek and I, at the end of the day, we'll talk about our days and how things went. And then we watch a show. We'll binge on Netflix and and watch a show and cuddle up on the couch together. And that just really connects us at the end of the day. And we also have weekly date nights. Yeah, those things, along with knowing each other's uh, most important emotional needs and doing the caring actions that meet those needs every day make a huge difference as well. In fact, we did a whole episode devoted to what that is, what your spouse's emotional needs are, and how to meet those. So we'll link to those in our show notes. Keeping all of these things in mind, learning to connect and not settling for a mediocre marriage is the best way to have a great marriage.